Thank you so much, Nate and uh, Jenny and Lucy and Michael for pulling this together. And what a great turnout. And I, I have to tell you that if you're a younger person, you are about to see probably the most amazing cartoonist in our profession. And if there was a greatest generation of political cartoonists, Mike Peters was one of the five or six guys in that generation. And I remember when I was a young cartoonist at the Columbus Dispatch in 1981 for 53 weeks. <laughs> and uh, I met Mike and Mary, and, and they were so gracious to me and as a 20-year-old kid. And now here we are 35 years later with Mike Peters, who is a, is a genetic freak. Um, he <laughs> was born in 1943. He's the world's youngest 72-year-old. Um, when you see, I mean, he looks younger than Nate does, and, and or he looks younger than the 20-year-old girls out here. And um, he's, the high, he's the highest energy person I've ever met. He's got the biggest heart I've ever seen, and every single cartoonist in this room can attest to that. Every cartoonist has gotten a hug from Mike Peters. And if any of you in the audience want a hug from Mike Peters, he will give you one. <laughs> now, Mike got started in political cartooning at his base newspaper in Okinawa in the U.S. Air Force, what, 1969? I'm doing this from memory. I mean, this is how well, I mean, we all know Mike Peters. We can, re we can recite his resume. And, um, and I'm also really good at memorizing baseball statistics because I'm, <laughs> I'm very autistic. So um, anyway, Mike Peters' mother was Charlotte Peters, who was the host of a TV show in Dayton, and she was very big potatoes in Dayton. And Mike would come on this show in the 50s, right, and, and entertain with your mother. So he was a very well-known kid, um, and he still is a very well-known kid. And he started at the Dayton Daily News in 1969, and he's going to tell you all about that. And there is no more beloved cartoonist in the United States. He won the Pulitzer Prize in 1980, and everybody's reaction was, why didn't he win the Pulitzer Prize in 1973? Why didn't he win that? I mean, it was the latest best Pulitzer Prize in the history of Pulitzer Prizes. And I have to say that it is a huge honor to introduce this man. You're going to have a great time. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Peters. All right. Okay, now let me see. I, am I working here? This is good. This is good. You guys, first of all, I didn't expect... Um, can, we, can we lift the lights up just a little bit? I, I, I know you wanted to have this uh, white, but can you... Yeah, just... That, that's great. That's great. I had no idea that you guys um, were... Um, uh, that there were going to be so many uh, of you. And secondly, I didn't know there were going to be so many kids. I mean, so many... Uh, not kids, but... Um, college students um, here. This is fabulous. Um, I, you know, one of the things, I, when I went to college, I was, went to Washington University in St. Louis. And, um, and I spent most of my time, both in grade school, no, uh, not grade school, but high school and college, going to summer school. That's what I did, because um, I got horrible grades. I was a terrible student. And I met this girl that was sitting down in the front, um, um, not the girl who's taking my picture, but this, uh, the girl right behind her is my wife, Mary, and she was the, um, she was the daughter of, um, uh, should I do this or should I do a microphone? How are you doing, uh, my buddy? Uh, should I do this or should I do a microphone? Or am I, am I being, am I here being here? Okay. Um, she was the daughter of the, uh, of the dean of students at Washington U. He's, he knew all my grades, and, and he kept saying to her, don't date this guy, uh, you know. He was bringing, he was bringing um, uh, big men on, on campus to home to have dinner so that she could meet big men on campus. He wanted them to be um, engineers or doctors, but all of them Presbyterian or Protestant, you know, that's what he wanted. And I was, um, I was a stuttering, car cross-eyed cartoonist uh, who was Catholic. And he said, no, not, none of that. And so um, my first, my first 
uh, first day in junior is in the, as a junior in in uh, in, in uh, Washington University, um, I came there, and the dean of uh, dean of art school came to me and he said, you know. I see you've been taking uh, summer school every year. I said, yeah, that's my MO, uh, MO whatever that is, that's my MO. And, and um, so that's what I do. He said, you, do, you can't do that anymore. You've got to actually, you know, pass. And, <laughs> and the whole idea of passing to me was, um, I, you know, was something I had never really thought about. Um, I was on the school paper. I was, uh, I was doing posters. I was uh, in the plays and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and uh, so I went to my professor, who is a Mr. Burnell, who had me the year before. And he, he, I'm going to have him this year, I mean, as a junior. And I said, Mr. Burnell, the, uh, the, the dean told me that I have to pass. And you know my grades. I said, what, what, what should I do? And he thought for a while, and he said, um, well, why don't you do, car you, you know, you like doing cartoons. I said, yeah, I love doing cartoons. He said, why don't you start doing cartoons in uh, all of your classes? I said, what do you mean? He said, when you go to figure drawing class, um, exaggerate them and make them into cartoons. When you go to painting class, paint cartoons. When you go to design class, design cartoons. I said, Mr. Burnell, won't I get in trouble? He said, Mike, you're already flunking. It's okay. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to hurt this. Um, you're, you know, try that. And, and so I started doing cartoons in all my classes. And you know, the art school, those of you who are in art class, you know, the guys come behind you like this and, you know, look at what you do and stuff and, you know, and they're, and but no, and so nobody hit me, and so I thought that was fabulous, you know, that that I wasn't being hit by these guys, and I was just doing my stuff. I get my report card. That first is a three term of three, you know, the first couple of months, and it was all A's and B's. And I called my my girlfriend, and I was on social probation. I was a sigma chi, and um, are there any sigma chi's here? Well, it was, I was in social probation uh, with sigma chi. Because, because my grades were so low, I couldn't take her to a, to a dance or anything because I, had, I was all Ds and Fs. And so um, I called her and I said, I got all As and Bs. Well, her father wanted to jump off Eads Bridge. Uh, you know, he wanted to commit suicide because of, of what I did. So, so there is hope. There is hope, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, is what I'm saying, you know, the, for art students. Um, I was talking to um, I was talking to my 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 buddy um, um, uh, um, Nate uh, Nat, Nate Nate where is Nate Nate is right here somewhere and uh, we were together uh, doing a radio show and he was talking about the first time um, the first time his newspaper ever got demonstrated in front uh, because of a cartoon he had and I was thinking about. I was thinking about a cart the first time I ever got demonstrated uh, at the Dayton Daily News. Um, I had done this cartoon. I don't even remember what the cartoon was, and um, and so I drew I drew um, women. I got I got paper and then lights. That's good. Okay. Uh, I don't even remember what the cartoon was, but um, but I. Uh, I did it. I thought it was a funny cartoon. It was about a women's women's club. You know this women's club. And all of a sudden, the women's club was, was there were about 50 members inside, outside of my newspaper, demonstrating. You know, I had just become a cartoonist, and they're demonstrating, and this is not right, and on all this, and and my editor, where's 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 the daughter? Where's the daughter? My, uh, this is my editor's daughter is right here. My editor Jim Fain said, "You got to go out there and and talk to him." I said, "I don't know what to say to him." You know, I. I just drew the cartoon, you know, uh, you know what it means. He's, well, around here, we go out and talk to the people. Well, it was around five, and everybody was starting to break up, but they said they're coming back tomorrow morning. He said, you find out everything you can about what you said, and then be able to um, justify it in front of these people. Well, the next day, there was like a hundred women, you know, in the TV, uh, the TV stations, and, and there's this not right and stuff like that, and they're carrying around big blow-ups of my cartoon. I mean, it's what we cartoonists, you know, have our first, I mean, you know, um, <laughs> it's what we want. It's what we want. And so, so, um, and I, so all night long, you remember that night, I spent all night long 
figure, you know, talking about what the pros and cons of was this cartoon and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I finally had my notes all written. I had a, I had a whole pile of notes on a, note, on a notepad about me justifying this cartoon. And, and so I go out there to meet him. And, and really, Jim pushed me out there. Uh, uh, where are you? Jim pushed me out there. And so, and so I said, I'm Mike Peters. Oh, well, like this. And I said, um, I said, what are you, what are you mad about? I mean, what is your, what's your main thing about my cartoon? And it was it used to be, and I and I hope you can see this, you guys. Um, it used to be that I would draw a face. I would draw a you know face of a of a of a lady, you know, and uh, and they're angry, angry, you know, and. Um, and uh, uh, and so they look look bad and stuff. And they have um, and they have hair. Okay, you that's good. Okay, they have hair, you know, like this and and stuff. And and uh, and they were saying something in the cartoon. And I wish to God I would remember what the cartoon said, but, you know. But but and then this was their face. And and then and then the neck, you know, and the hair down like this and stuff. And then I did that little thing, you know, that little thing we have under our nose, and then and and then and the shading and stuff, and and they said um, uh, we hated that you had all of our noses running, and I said, <laughs> now I've been up all night long reading this frigging thing about this group and 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 stuff, and I said, no, no, that's the, see, that's that little thing, and they, and they all said, oh, okay, and then they all disbanded, you know, you know, it was. They have this thing, but I learned, I learned about, about life as a cartoonist. You know, you don't really know. I mean, you don't, I mean, you try to do a good job. Um, um, uh, th there was this, there was this one guy that I was telling, uh, I was, was talking about at this, um, at this, um, you know, people who get angry at you um, um, as a cartoonist. You know, you have no idea. When I first, when I first came to Dayton, um, I was I was taught by a great man, great cartoonist named Bill Malden. And Bill Malden was um, he did Willie and Joe in Second World War. You wouldn't know anything about it, but but he was a great frigging cartoonist. And he said to me um, before I left, he said the biggest thing is to get people pissed. You know, get people <laughs> pissed. Um, that's our job. Uh, you, you know, we can't. We can't make people um, um, agree with us in just uh, three seconds when they look at the cartoon. They can read an editorial and, oh, I agree with that. But three seconds later, after reading one of our cartoons, they don't go, oh, yeah, man, I hated uh, Obama, you know, um, uh, three seconds ago. But now I understand what this guy is trying to know. No, you know, you know, it doesn't work like that. And so, so he said, make them mad if you can. Make them mad. Make them laugh and make them laugh. Uh, make them mad. Well, that's kind of fun. So I was on the bus um, uh, coming down to Dayton, Ohio from Chicago, where I was. I would worked on, with the art staff. And I'm sitting and I'm trying to, now, you know, I'm not a mad person. I, you know, I wake up whistling. I'm not like Paul Conrad who would, who would go, you know, woke up every morning. God damn it, what happened today? And then, they'd, oh, look at the, at the newspaper. Oh, God damn, Conrad, you know, uh, you better get this guy Reagan, you know, like this. And, and his kids told me that he would do this, uh, just uh, talking to himself and then yelling at the paper when he got it at the, at the, front, of the, at the front of the door. And I whistle, I whistle, and she tells me, stop whistling, you asshole. And so, 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 so I wake up fairly happy, but, but uh, Malden said, get people mad. That's what you're supposed to do. So I, um, I, I'm on the bus, and I'm, I'm coming down, and, and uh, I see Springfield, Illinois, or, you know, going from Chicago. They have a lot of pollution. That's good. I'll draw, do something about pollution, you know, but I'm not, I'm not going to draw for the Springfield paper, so I, I'm not going to do that, uh, you know, and I'm trying to find things that I can get mad about. We pull in, uh, the bus pulls in to, to, uh, 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 to Dayton, and, um, and, it was a, and it was Sunday, and, um, and uh, it was, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Greyhound bus depot. And it was uh, an old depot. And I got off the bus and I, I looked at the depot and it looked cruddy. And I said, this is cruddy, look at this. Somebody should do a cartoon about, about <laughs> Greyhound bus depots being so dirty, you know? And, and you know, little water bugs and stuff and there were cracks in the, in the thing and so, 
I'm thinking about cartoons I can do about the, you know, the frigging, you know, Greyhound bus depot. And, and I've got my luggage and I'm, and I'm, I'm crossing the street. And all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of the street and some guy, is Sunday in Dayton. And, uh, and I hear the guy says, uh, hey, hold it there, buddy. And I look around, there's a policeman. And I said, yes. And he said, you're jaywalking. Now, now <laughs> you gotta understand, now in Chicago, you can get killed. I mean, there are people in the streets all the time. I mean, uh, people driving, driving in the streets. Dayton, Dayton, Dayton is like, uh, is like, you know, is, is like that, you know, it's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing frigging in, uh, in that town. I mean, there's nobody. It's nothing. I mean, truly, it was, it was, it was a, 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 a sagebrush would come across the street. And I'd say, what? I said, I said he says, uh, you know, you've got to give you a ticket. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, first of all, I thought I was kind of cool. I thought I was kind of cool because Walden, you know, and, and Fischetti, who was the other cartoonist who told me about get him mad, <clears throat> we, had, we had lunch together, and they officially sort of made me the... 201st editorial cartoonist in the country. So it was a big deal. And then the Dayton Daily News had a picture of me on the cover saying, uh, you know, Mike Peters, cartoonist is coming to the city. So I thought I was kind of hot, hot stuff. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you telling me you're going to give me a ticket for jaywalking? Well, he says, you break the law, pal. You know, you got to pay. And I said, look at the street. There's no one here. I mean, it's, it's dead. And he said, I don't care. You break the law. And, I said, I said, I can't believe this. I said, uh, I said, maybe you haven't watched the newspaper, but I'm Mike Peters. And the guy said, Mike <laughs> Peters. I said, no, 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 wait a minute. No, wait a minute. <clears throat> I'm the editorial cartoonist for the Dayton Daily News. Dayton Daily News. <laughs> and you know, a few more of these things. And I was really pissed because of this cop giving me this ticket. And so I said, okay, buddy, you can watch, watch, watch the newspaper. I'm going to do a cartoon about you guys, about about the thing, because I thought it was hot shit. I mean, I truly thought I was, I was some, something. It turned out, you know, starting out as a political cartoon, you're nothing, I mean, you're just a ant. But, so, so I get to the office and, uh, on Monday, and, and um, I had worked up some ideas, and, and Jim, my boss, who I adored, uh, said to me, um, so, um, uh, do you have any idea? I said, I got a great idea. I said, let me do it up, but I, I don't want to show you until, until I get it done. He said, okay, well, fine, you know, cartoon. And so I did up this, I did up this street, a Dayton street, and I had, I had, uh, uh, it was filled with people, I mean, you know, things. I had some guys running out of a, a bank with money, you know, running, you know, and, and they had big bags of, you know, the dollar sign thing. And then I had uh, a couple of guys uh, mugging some old lady, and, and there was an old lady in her curlers, and, and she had a little puppy, and the guys are beating her. And then there was, uh, I really tried to find something bad. I mean, this is stupid, but, 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 I, had, um, uh, but I had some guys uh, stealing out of, a, out of a blood mobile that was up on stilts. Uh, it, was, it was kind of, you know, up on um, these stones and they were stealing out of the blood mobile. And then I had a little kid, little kid with one of those little spinning things on their hat walking across the street and the cops who were standing there said grab him a jaywalker you know so <laughs> so i mean a frigging good cartoon i mean i thought because because it was showing all this crime going on and then the cops are 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 arresting this jaywalker so i put it in now their the name of their um of their uh police department uh police chief was uh, uh, uh o'connor o'connor you know grover o'connor and so so I, I put this cartoon in knowing that, you know, they're going to call and, and they're going to be outraged and they're going to have me, you know, take it out or something, you know, thing. And so I get a call and, um, and it's a voice and says, um, hello, is this the guy who did the cartoon uh, in uh, today's newspaper? And I said, yes, it is. He says, this is Chief Grover O'Connor. I said, well, Chief Grover O'Connor. <laughs> I said, um, I guess um, I guess you saw the cartoon. And he said, "Yes, we did." And I said, "I guess you guys are kind of pissed, right?" <laughs> yeah. And he said, "No, I, I want to have the original for my wall." And <laughs> and I and I said, w "What are you talking about? You know, the the cops are arresting this kid for 
jaywalking. And he says, yeah, it's the first time your fucking newspaper ever showed us doing our job, arresting somebody. <laughs> so I love it. I want to have it. And I, so I was crushed. I was crushed. You know, those, those were things that as a cartoonist, you think you know what you're doing. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know what you're doing, you know. Um, there was a there was a priest. There was a priest. I, I, I'm telling these stories that I've never told really before because a lot of my buddies are in the and there. I've told these some stories that they have heard so many frigging times. So I'm trying to find other things that you might be interested in. There was a priest, um, a, a priest named um, Father Greasy. Greasy, believe it or not, and um, and he was. It was a, a wonderful guy, you know, he was fun. He was fun to do. Um, uh, large, round head, and uh, let me see, he had a little nose like this and, and little glasses like this, and, and not very funny, little bitty whiffs of hair, whiffs of hair, and then a huge mouth, though. I remember when he would, would talk, you know, his mouth was huge and stuff. And so, so I, I, one time I'm a Catholic. I, I don't go very much anymore, never. And so, <laughs> and so, uh, but I, I, at the time, I was going to this church right next, next to the Dayton Daily News. Uh, uh, Our Lady of Sacred Heart was right behind the newspaper. And you were probably too young to remember that. And uh, so I'd go there and, and, um, and um, uh, have, you know, go to Mass and stuff like that every once in a while, I mean, uh, on a regular basis. And so, and so this one time, Father Greasy was there, and he said, um, he was saying, um, you, know, you know, it's awful about you people, you people. And then he gave this, he gave this, oh, wait, wait, I'll give a, bet, uh, a better one. I, I was there at another time. And this lady, and this lady, no, no, I've got a bunch of things about this guy because and he, and, um, um, this, this girl, he, Father Greasy was giving out uh, communion. And all of a sudden he said, you, you, stand up. <laughs> and this woman was, was in the front row and she stood up and he says, you're wearing shirts. Shirts are not allowed in this church. Go, leave, leave, there's a Sunday mass. And, and everybody's like, holy shit. And, you, and this girl, and she had a baby, and, and, she, and she walks out, and she had little shorts, and go, and dress properly and stuff. And, and, and well, I heard about this, and, uh, and so the next day, I did this cartoon of, of Father Greasy, and he's, and, and he's there. We had a, there was a big uh, cross of Jesus uh, in the front, of the, I mean, uh, inside the church. And he's saying, you, you in the shorts, get out of my church, you know, which was great. I mean, it was fabulous, you know, on the cross, you know. Well, so, so I found these different things that I could do cartoons about, about this guy, Father Greasy. And he hated me. And, <laughs> and uh, but it was sort of, a, you know, a right of, uh, this was, we're cartoonists. And, and they're supposed to hate you if you don't like what they're doing. And Catholic Church, you know, uh, uh, anti-woman and all that kind of stuff. So, so I'd be doing these things. So this one day, I, I'll, I'll never forget, and I never told you this, um, uh, but I went there for, for, um, I went there for um, um, a confession. And, uh, and, uh, and while I'm coming in, Father Greasy's door, little door was open, and he saw it was me. Bad idea, bad idea. Because then, I mean, most of my, most of my bad things, you know, during that time was watching dirty movies and, you know, doing bad things with myself. And so, so, and so, and so I would, I would say to him things like that. And he said, you what? How dare you? You're acting like a child, you know, stuff. Oh God, I never did that again. I never went to confession again, you know, after that. <laughs> but this one day, this one day, um, uh, uh, he was in, he was in, Lords, Lords, Lords. He was at Lords, and he sent me, he sent me a um, um, a postcard. It said, and it said, um, I'm praying. I'm at, you know, it said Lords up there, and it says, I'm praying for your soul. I'm praying for your soul, and uh, and it says Father Greasy, and then the front said uh, to Judas Iscariot. Dayton Daily News. <laughs> now, first I was offended. 
But then I thought, how did this fucking thing get to me? I mean, <laughs> what happened there? I mean, somebody had to get this and they, Judas Iscariot, yeah, that's Peter's up there on the third floor, you know? Oh yeah, give it to him, <laughs> you know, he's the only one, <laughs> you know? It's so funny, it's so funny. Oh, but uh, the, uh, having people hate you is amazing. Uh, let me see, let me see. Um, um, first group, what did I say? Let me say first group to dem Oh yeah, no, I did that. I did the confession. I did that. Oh, my mom. Okay. Um, uh, my mom. If ever you want to see um, um, uh, my mom, um, we, uh, we grew up in St. Louis. And, uh, and he, my friend said, "Ding." My uh, uh, grew up in St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis was amazing. Uh, growing up with a mom like I had was kind of amazing because she had this TV show for 20, almost 25 years. Do you know how long it is to have a TV show? 25 years um, and local TV. Uh, this is right before she quit, right before syndication started, or she would have been syndicated. And, uh, and she was amazing. And um, I, always, I always loved that she had this show. And it was an interesting. It was an interesting show. She would have 250 women in. At that, at that time, they had women's groups all all over uh, St. Louis because women uh, they had. It was before women got jobs and stuff like that. So uh, so she would have women's groups. 250 women all over the uh, the southern or that end of the state, Missouri. And and she would. If you ever want to see, uh, you go to Charlotte, like the city, uh, like the city show, Charlotte Peters show. And, and there's an hour of YouTube it has a thing of her doing her stuff. But she would come in like on harnesses in a little tutu and, and she would have a, a wand and, and she would come flying over the women and she would sing a song called uh, Nobody Loves a Fairy Over 40, you know, and, and she would throw, <laughs> throw little pixie dust on the women and stuff and they would laugh and that's, that's what she would do. She would, uh, or then introduce, um, introduce, uh, famous stars, she would introduce big stars. I mean, uh, John Wayne and, and uh, Bob Hope and, and Martin and Lewis. Um, my wife gave me this, these cufflinks. Martin, Martin and Lewis, I mean, they were, they were big time when I was a kid, and, and I loved Martin and Lewis. Uh, I had a bad stutter, and kids, people laughed at me all the time, and so, and so I, I, I didn't talk. I would start drawing. That's the reason why I started. But, um, but but this one time, I can tell them, I'm going to tell them the story, but I won't say the F word. I won't say the F word. Um, <laughs> um, but Martin and Lewis, um, uh, they had a best buddy who came and was with them all the time, helping them get ready and stuff. And Marion found on, this, uh, on, on the web uh, these cufflinks, and, and it says uh, uh, to Guy, I think it's Guy or something like that, to Guy, best Dean Martin. To guy best Jerry Lewis. This is a present that they gave to this guy, and I'm wearing. Well, okay, you know, but it's a big thing. So, so, but, but this one time, uh, my mom was going to introduce them um, at the Fox, I think Fox Theater in St. Louis, and so, and so she said, "Would you like to come down?" And uh, now I've never told. I truly some. Of, these are some stories I have never told. So you've never heard some of these. I swear, I know this. Um, Benson is here saying, oh, yeah, I've heard it all, you know. Um, um, oh. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm, I'm. And so, and so, so mom let me come backstage where, where, uh, where Martin and Lewis were and in their tuxedos and they were getting ready to go on one. And uh, I went to where Jerry, Jerry Lewis's um, uh, uh, dressing room was. And I'm waiting, I was like eight, and, and Dean Martin comes out, you know, and, and I, I, I think, no, that's not Jerry Lewis. And he comes and, hi, hi, buddy, I'm real sweet. And I think, yeah, right, no, that's not Jerry Lewis. And so I went over, I went over to the other one, kind of waiting for Jerry Lewis to, Jerry Lewis to come out. And, um, and I, so I've never said this in front of a crowd because it's not a crowd kind of thing, but okay. Okay, and so, um, and so I'm waiting for Jerry Lewis to come out. And he says, F me, F you, <laughs> in his dining, in his uh, dressing room. And then he says, F you, again. And my mom came out, and when she was mad, she would walk like this. And, <laughs> and she would have these stiletto uh, heels and walk like, now she's about to introduce him, you know. 
And, and then Jerry Lewis came out. And, there's Jerry Lewis, you know, there's Jerry Lewis. <laughs> you know, not ever thinking about what just transpired. When I was 30, I think I asked my mom what had happened, and he had asked her to, to come with him up to his room. And she says, fuck you. And he, oh, I'm sorry. And he says, fuck me, fuck you. <laughs> you know, fuck you. <laughs> you, know, you know, never told that story. But that's real. I mean, that's real. But, um, but um, okay, let me, uh, let me tell some, let me tell some. Oh, yeah, no, no. But she had this one, uh, she had one, um, uh, uh, she, would, uh, she would have lots of guests on. And they would do all these fasc fascinating things. And uh, actors and, and dancers and all this. One guy I remember that I was there and I saw this. Um, she had a guy named Popeye on, and now this guy Popeye, he was with the Barnum and Bailey Circus, and uh, and what he could do at a moment's notice, he could uh, he could um, stand there and pop his eyes out of his out of the socket. And uh, he could pop one, and, and when they pop, they like that. Now, now pop one, or then pop another one. And now they didn't hang down like this, but they were three fourths, five eighths, nine tenths, you know, out like this. And he he could move them either way. It wasn't like they all had to go the same way. They could move them like this. I mean, like a reptile or something like that. And uh, and my mom said to him, "No, this is." 1950 women. I mean, these are women. 1950. Um, if you ever look at pictures, uh, they wore little hats and uh, and they wore little gloves. Everybody had gloves on, and uh, and uh, they had their little um, and, and sometimes sometimes they would have the gauze coming down from their hat, and and so they were all very Midwestern, very you know, thing. And so and so uh, so my mom said, uh, could you do this? Um, uh, for my women, and and he says yes, and 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 she said, well, let, I'll bring all the cameras in. So she had three cameras. So they all came in, and there were big um, uh, TV sets all around the studio, and all the women are standing there. And he said, uh, he said, now do you want me to do uh, two, um, you know, two eyes or just one? She says, well, you can do anything with it. Mm, mm, mm. And so he said, oh, okay, and. And he went to his right eye, and, and the cameras came real close, so there was just a, a big eye right there. And then, you know, he would pop it out, and you could see the blood veins and all that. And all the women are going, oh, God, oh, God. And then he, you know, popped out the other one. Then, oh, God. And then he started sucking them back in, sucking them, and then popping them out and sucking. And then uh, she had a uh, she organist who, who would start playing a Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle. And it would come to town, and then and he's pop, sucking and popping and sucking. Sucking and popping. Well, by the end of the thing, the women were crazy, you know, and, and everybody was screaming. And and my mom said, um, uh, "Is this the only place, you know, in the circus that you do this?" He said, "No, no. My favorite place is going." And he said, "You have a, a wonderful restaurant here named Tony. Going to a really fancy restaurant, and then when they bring me the bills, I pop my eyes out like this." <laughs> and he said, "I lose waitress. They faint. They totally faint." <laughs> and look at the little pop, you know. You know, you know, but she was a hoot, and and and, and so you can look on the on, on the thing. Hang on now. Um, I I have uh, how am I doing as far as time? Well, where where am I? Where am I? Where am I? How many? How many? Oh, okay, okay. Um, I had a great thing with Superman. Uh, one of the things that I loved about Superman uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was a cartoonist, and I mean I still am a cartoonist, but but I was a cartoonist. And I was, I, I was always drawing eyes, uh, you know, uh, drawing, uh, trying to learn how to draw people and stuff like that. And the thing I loved about, about Superman is that, uh, you know, here's, his, here's his, uh, his, his nose and his chin, you know, nice chin, you know, and stuff like that. And he had an eyebrow. Can you see this? Am I doing okay? Oh, gosh. Uh, maybe we should turn down the, oh, no, this is fine. Uh, I guess we, okay, that's good. Great, great, great. Um, um, uh, there's his eyebrow and then his little curl, you know, his wonderful curl and stuff like that. And, um, and the thing I loved about Superman uh, is the eyes, his eye, uh, this 1950 eye. I don't know if it's still the same eye, but, but you know, we all do eyes. We, we try to draw eyes like this and, you know, our dots are, you know, um, um, things. I don't know. Uh, but his eye was just like this that 
How cool is that? Look at that. You, you see that? How fun is that? I mean, uh, that blew me away as a, as a young person who wanted to draw. I said, well, I can do that. I, you know, I can do that eye. That, that's so cool. And so, so I started loving Superman. I, and and I, I was drawing him and all this kind of stuff. You can bring it up now a little bit. And, and, so, um, and so one day, it was Christmas, and, uh, and my mom, who had no time at all, she was spending all of her time down at the studio, uh, one Christmas, uh, she gave me a box, and I opened up this box, and, and it was a Superman suit. Now, this is before any kid. I swear to God, no kid, no kid had a Superman suit. Nothing. Uh, uh, we, we, all had, we all had little uh, you know, towels and stuff like that. She made me this Superman suit and, and, and with the blue, and it was, she made it out of a long john, a long john underwear and then dyed it blue, but she had a perfect, the perfect S, you know, that's not an easy thing to do, that, that S that he has. And she sewed it herself and, and with the little, I, I had my red shirts and then she, and then she uh, had uh, uh, um, uh, uh, stocking st stockings, you know, uh, stockings that were sewed, sewed right there. And then it was uh, long john, so you could enter it by this way. You know, you unbutton it, and then you climb through like this with the cape. Well, I looked at it. I, I, I was, I was, I, I couldn't believe what she had done. And, um, and uh, I, it, it was like, it was like, it was like the guy in Close Encounters. Now, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, you remember the guy? Uh, and he opens up the ark, and and it's shining on his face, and he's going uh, like this. You know, except. Uh, you know that guy was a Nazi, and his face fell off. But, but, I was it was glowing at me like this, and I was afraid to touch it. It was truly, uh, truly like the uh, shroud of Turin or something. I I didn't want to hurt it, I, and so I, what I did, I put it up in my closet, and and just like Superman would in the comic book would open up the closet. Oh, there's my there's Superman suit. <laughs> you know, well, I had one that looked great. And so then I realized, oh, no, 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 wait, I, I've got two more stories, two more stories. Okay, well, uh, then I've got to hurry up then. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, uh, so I've owned, I own one of these. Uh, I've owned like 10 or something of these. The most funny story, and then I go on to my two other stories, and then I'm going to be done. Stop it. Stop it. What? Oh, God. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course I will. Okay, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, I will, I will. Um, okay, uh, what? Okay, finish the story. Um, um, uh, so, uh, oh, yes, so, so the most fun I had with it one time, I've had 11 of these. I mean, uh, starting when I'm young and then getting older and older because uh, you always need one. I mean, I just always need one, I think. And so, so this one time, my daughter, who was 13, my daughter Marcy, uh, she hated me. She was between between uh, twelve to what? Well, how is she, is she now? Forty two? You know, uh, you, you know. <laughs> she had not talked to me. I mean, it was just. And she would come downstairs and she'd say hello, and I'd say hello, and the back of her head would would raise. And uh, and so so the only time she would ever talk to me is when um, she. She um, she needed something, and sometimes she, she would forget her homework or something. Like that. You know, Dad, I forgot my homework. Okay, fine, you know, bring it. In. So it's one day she called and she said, "Dad, I I have a term paper that I did last night, but I forgot to bring it. Bring it here as fast as you can." I said, "Okay." So so my wife comes upstairs and I'm putting on my Superman outfit and <laughs> and 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 she's uh, and she says, well, "What are you doing?" I said, "You don't want to know." <laughs> Leave the room, leave the room, you know, because she hasn't talked to me for two years, you know, except for that. And so, so I put on my Superman suit and, and button my, button my cape, you don't always have to have your cape button. And, uh, and then I put on um, a trench coat, you know, raincoat, because it's a little, and I, and, and, um, and so then I got in the car with her paper and I drove down to, and this is before 9-11 now, the, you can't do this now, but at the time you could do it. And so I drove down to Beaver Creek High School, Beaver Creek High School, and I told her I would mention Beaver Creek and tell the story about it. And, uh, and so I go down there, park, and I've got a trench coat now, and my red boots and my long cape is following me as I walk to the place. And, uh, and so uh, I walk through, I go to the lady, I said, I, I said excuse me, um, 
where is Marcy Peters' room? She says, oh, that's right down there. I said, thank you. And she said, okay. And then she starts reading something. Else. She's not looking at what I'm wearing at this, at this cape that's behind me and, and my red boots, you know. And I walked down to, uh, to her room. Now, she had, a, she had a wooden door, a wooden door with a, little, um, um, with a little pane of glass that went like this, okay, just right, right from here down to here, um, a pane of glass. And so, so I took off my trench coat and I knocked on the door, knock, 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 and she could see the, the, the suit. And, and, and all you could hear is one girl inside there going, oh shit. <laughs> and so I knock on this door and she had a teacher named Mr. Fudge. I love Mr. Fudge. And so, and Mr. Fudge knew me. And so he opened the door and he says, why Superman, what are you doing here? I said, I said, Mr. Fudge, do you have a little girl here, which drive her crazy because she's 13 or something. Do you have a little girl here named Marcy Peters? And he says, why, yes, we do. I said, well, she wanted me to get this here as fast as I could. And he says, thank you, Superman. And I said, absolutely, you know. Well, it took another three or four years for her to say hello to me. You know, I mean, you know, she hated my guts, you know. Okay, let me show a couple of cartoons and then I'll tell one last story and then we're... Okay, editorial cartoons. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, these are some of my favorite, my favorite editorial cartoons. And these are not necessarily in any kind of, uh, any kind of order. Um, uh, they're just fun. They're fun things that I enjoyed, I enjoyed doing. And uh, let me see. I'm, I know I'm bending. You should never do that to a crowd. And uh, okay, and they're sort of self-explanatory, uh, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, this first one is just... Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a very conservative lady that that I love. Um, I love doing um, bad things again about, and so I have. I says uh, a priest is saying, "Cancel the exorcism." It's just Ann Coulter, and you see, <laughs> you, you see her head is is turned totally around. Maybe I should. Can I turn this a little bit more so it's not so slanted? How about that? Is that a bad thing? Is, am I uh, doing a bad thing? Me turning this around, or maybe I should turn the camera right. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine, and then turn that a little bit more. Yeah, okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, this, uh, this next thing, oh, that's great. See, that looks like we meant it to be like that. <laughs> All right, and so, see, you should never bend down to a crowd. That's really stupid. Um, uh, you know, this is um, a cartoon I did last year, and I, I, and, and I just, it's not all that funny, but I think it's really true. Uh, uh, it says, pick when stand your ground won't, won't work. He says, I saw the hood and I felt threatened, you know. And then the other black, little black kid said, I saw the hood and I felt threatened, threatened, you know. And so you see, you know, which one's, the, well, okay, never mind, never mind. I was trying to make a political, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, this one. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, this was kind of fun. Um, oh, thank you. This is great. I know. Oh, am I'm, I supposed I'm, to? I'm the lovely Vanna White. Oh, <laughs> you're the lovely Vanna White. Uh, this one um, uh, just is a teacher, and she's saying, um, use the verb sax, as in looting and pillaging in a sentence, and the kid says Goldman Sachs. You know, <laughs> clever. See, I'm, I'm an editorial cartoonist. I hadn't, you know. Uh, hang on now. Um, this, I think maybe everybody did this, but I just liked it, you know. This says Iowa just passed the same-sex marriage act, you know, and then, and then thing, and then thing. You are so dear. You're so dear for doing this. I should be showing your cartoons. Then, then sure. they'd be laughing and stuff. Okay, um, um, uh, um, this guy, uh, Michael Eisner, I, you know, I love, I mean, you know, I love anything about Disney. And, and truly, it's one of the reasons why I became a comic strip cartoonist, because I had these... Um, ideas about Disney uh, as a political cartoonist. And so, so, the, uh, so the board, the Disney board, um, uh, voted um, uh, Eisner out. Um, and he was making movies like, um, I don't know, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the bad movies. And so, and, and, and so I had him <clears throat> the morning. And it says, morning at Michael Eisner's. And it said, Fro from the board, you know, you know. And then I got a call, I got a call from Eisner's, um, no, not from Eisner, from, uh, from Walt Disney's, uh, Roy Disney's, uh, um, uh, their, their, their lawyers. And they said, we saw that thing in, in, in New York Times. I said, listen, I, I didn't mean to, do, and they said, we love that. We want to give that to, um, uh, to Roy. And I said, oh God, this is great, you know. Um, okay, this is kind of self-explanatory. 
a girl is saying, uh, is holding this book, Eat Shoots and Leaves, and it's, it's Dick Cheney's biography, you know. <laughs> and, uh, oh, this is, you know, um, oh, just did it, you know. You know, it's when Tiger was going through his problems, you know. I'm so, I'm sorry, it was a bad thing. Uh, this one I love, uh, um, it says, um, it says Gram uh, Grandpa, could you teach me how, to, how my puppy a trick? Sure, speak, speak, <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> now this is one of those things where I told you, um, I told you, I did a lot of Disney stuff, and I thought maybe I should be doing a strip because I could do this on a regular kind of thing. Um, a sperm bank. One of the things, great things about California is they have celebrity sperm banks, and you can go in and make a deposit into this sperm bank, and then women can come and make a make a withdrawal. And so I had the guy who runs who runs the sperm bank. And he says, look, lady, uh, you're the one who asked for a famous movie star with dark hair, strong nose, and deep-set eyes, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, that's cheap, but it was fun. Um, this is when they were uh, uh, around the country. They were getting rid of a lot of uh, uh, Department of Justice um, guys. And, and so I had uh, the Justice Department is handing out all the more pink slips. He says, I hear they belong to J. Edgar Hoover, you know. <laughs> I know, I know, but you know, I thought it was cute. Um, um, this is during um, the Bush administration, and he was so up um, uh, the Saudis. Uh, no, I mean he liked the Saudis, and uh, and um, and one of the Saudis came to visit him, Prince Abdullah, and uh, two of Abdullah's wives are back there, and he says, "I remember when Prince Abdullah used to look at me like that." You know, <laughs> you know. Okay, this this it turns out is the cartoon that. I learned from, um, I learned from, oh gosh, the great Russell Baker, who was on the board that year, and he said, I picked this up. I, I oh, the gave, 80 I, I, the 80 Pulitzer. Right. And, and it's a nuclear, nuclear reactor, and the one woman is saying to the other woman, he's grown a foot since I saw him last, you know. <laughs> you know, you know. Hey, it's an important, <laughs> the fucking important cartoon. Okay, all right. Oh, yes. Is this it? Is, is it? is that was the last one? I don't want. I want this to be the no, last we've one. Got lots okay. Well, here. Yeah, here yeah, but, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Let me just do this. Let me just do this. Okay. Um, I won't tell us that story. We have no time. Oh, I see. I I got you. Okay. Fine. Okay. Let me tell a few more. Okay. Let me let me do all that. Okay. Oh, stop. Stop. My wife said that I have to get done. Um, um, uh, this is this is um, um, uh, Prince Harry was caught um, at, a, at a Halloween party, and, and, and he went as a Nazi, you know, a Nazi thing. And so I did this cartoon, uh, Charles, and uh, what is Charles's wife's name, you know? Corilla. Corilla? Deville? Corilla? No. Corilla Deville. Yeah, no, it's not Corilla. Mickey Mouse. Not. And so he says, uh, Harry, how could you walk around with that horrible thing on your arm? And he, he says, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite, one of my favorite cartoons. And then the last is my favorite thing that I did on, on, uh, on uh, Clinton, you know, just as, uh, I, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a stupid. <laughs> hey, thank you all. Is, is that, am I done? Oh, okay, no. Take questions. Oh, take, take questions. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we can raise, raise the stuff. You are so sweet. You are so sweet. I think we told some of my favorite stories, but I know, I know we have to, I can tell one. Maybe I can tell one. The worst, the worst, no. Okay, what? The question. Okay, question. Okay, well, the worst thing, the worst thing that, you know, I love doing practical jokes. And, 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 um, I'll do it, make it real fast. And, uh, okay, and, um, um, my wife, uh, one of my kids, we lived in a cul-de-sac in Beaver Creek, Ohio, another place, and, uh, and all the kids, the little kids at that time, they were um, um, uh, taking piano, and, we all, and they were all going to the same lady. And so we thought it was fine, and we, uh, all the fathers would drive their kids there and then pick them up later. So one day, Marion says to me, okay, tomorrow's Friday, you, uh, um, Molly is going to have a rehearsal, a piano rehearsal, at this Episcopal church. Um, and she said, I want you to come there. I said, when? And she said, two o'clock. I said, I can't do that. I, I got two editorial cartoons I got to do today. You know, one for uh, Saturday, or one for, the, yeah, I just got two editorial cartoons. And she said, 
stop this. This is you're 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 a dad now. You're you know other fathers are the coach to teens, and you don't do. You can at least come to the frigging you know thing. I said you're right. Okay, okay, fine. So she showed me where the Episcopal Church was and stuff. So to, and I told Jim, my boss, I was only going to do one cartoon, and so. <laughs> I, I drove on to this Episcopal church. So I get there and I listen to a uh, the bunch of cars there and I walk into this uh, church and I hear where the recital is and I walk over <clears throat> and everybody's sitting there and the kids are playing and I got there in time for my daughter to play and oh, yeah, it's wonderful and stuff. And I'm looking around and these are all the guys in my neighborhood. I mean, all the men, uh, the women were there, but all the guys were the guys in my neighborhood. And I see all my guys, they all worked at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, you know, uh, they're all top secret guys. But this one guy named, um, named I think, Rick, you know, uh, Rick. Um, um, we would all play, uh, play poker together. And, um, and, um, and this guy, Rick, I mean, he was the grossest guy in the world. And, <laughs> And, and I never saw him dressed up, and he was wearing this, uh, this blue suit. And, but I see him from the back, I mean, over to the side. And, uh, but he would, every other, word, every other word would be the F word, and, and then he would do the farmer's blow and do a track, and you go, no, no, you know, but, you know, you know, a deal, you know, and stuff like that. So I see him at this, um, at this event, and I've never seen him dressed up. So afterwards, we all get up and we all go into another room to have cookies and um, uh, cookies and uh, Kool Aid. And so, so I have a, I have my Kool Aid and I'm eating my cookies and, and I'm and I'm against the wall, uh, just kind of um, you know I'm I'm all these people are I'm bored really because nobody's talking to me about God that great cartoon you did yesterday or a thing, <laughs> nothing. I mean it was just oh weren't those kids wonderful yeah wonderful you know it was, oh, it was great you know, and so. So I'm bored, and I'm kind of drinking my Kool-Aid, and I look over, and there's the blue suit, my buddy. And so and I said, this is going to be great. So I ate my cookie, and, uh, and, then I, and then I moved close to my buddy. Now, he was a Marine. He was a Marine. I th and I thought that was the reason why, oh, yeah, you know, farmers blow and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's what they did on long journeys when they're in, in the submarines and stuff. And so, uh, and so, and so I went over and, and uh, drank my Kool-Aid. And uh, I reach over and I grab him by his package and I squeeze it. And I said, hi there, sailor, new in town. Thinking my buddy would, you know, hit me and then, you know, we'd laugh and then talk about something other than kids playing piano. And so, and, uh, and he didn't do anything. And so I thought, um, you know, Marines I had heard uh, have like leather things. And so I thought maybe I should do it heavier. So I, I reached over. <laughs> And I grabbed his, his package, and I squeezed it hard, and I said, hi there, sealer, new in town. And I've got my hand down there, waiting for him to hit me. I look up, and that's the Episcopalian minister standing there <laughs> like this. And I let go, and I don't know what to say, and I said, I thought you were a Marine, and then... <laughs> And then I walk over to Mary and I said, I'll meet you in the car. She said, what? I said, I'll tell you later. Right? And then worst thing I ever did. Okay, let's have questions. Let's have questions. You guys. You guys are great. You guys are great. Uh, you are so sweet. So sweet. Anybody have questions? If not, we can all go and have, and have things. Um, um, if there's no more questions, if there's no questions, I can tell one more quick, quick story quick story that would take the time of questions what okay was the oh yeah you would you would ask a question you ask what 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 was the toughest day in your career ever the, the biggest the biggest toughest well day I in remember, your career besides getting up yeah <laughs> i remember this one day um now what was the toughest day i have i ever had well i've had tough days just like you you know there's nothing comes and all that kind of stuff I know this one day, I, it was back in, uh, in uh, when, when Henry Kissinger was uh, Secretary of State. Now, we live in Beaver Creek, which is right next to Beaver Creek, which is right next to, um, to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And, and, um, and I was trying to do a cartoon about Henry Kissinger. Uh, some, something pissed me off in the thing that I read. And... Um, 
Marion was about to do something that evening. So she said, you have to come home by four and take care of the kids. I said, okay, okay. And so I, I couldn't come up with anything. So I told my boss, Jim, I said, I can't come up with anything, but I'll come up with something tonight. And then I'll, uh, I'll drive it down and take it, bring it to the paper. And he said, fine. Well, all day long, all people talked about was that the shuttle, the brand new shuttle, was when the shuttle was just starting, was coming to Dayton because of the Wright brothers. Uh, you know, because the Wright brothers that's where their aviation started. And so I'm going, yeah, are oh, you going to go down to Air Force, uh, the base, and see it? And uh, No, no, I got Henry Kissinger. I got to do a Henry Kissinger thing. And, and so all day long, and, well, yeah, I'm going down. Uh, you know, you come with us? No, no, I, I got to stay here, and I go, I go home and take care of my kids and stuff. So, so really, I was sweating bullets trying to do this Henry Kissinger thing. I get home, and I'm sitting there, <coughs> and my kids are watching tele television, and I'm trying to think how to make this Kissinger thing work, I swear. And, uh, and the kids are saying, the kids are saying, look, the TV said, you know, the, uh, Wright Patterson, and, 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 the, and, the shuttle is, and the shuttle was on top of a big plane that came over and flew over Wright Patterson. And I'm going, and, and I, I'm not far from Wright Patterson. And so I'm saying, that's fine, that's fine. And, and all of a sudden, um, you know, it's around seven in, at night, it's daylight, you know, still it's summer. And all of a sudden, my house started shaking, and, and the house goes totally black. Because it was right above us, and then it left, and then it got light again. And, and, and I went outside, and I said, look, there's the shuttle, <laughs> and the shuttle. And, and so I thought, well, fuck, uh, fuck Henry Kissinger. And I did what probably was my most, my most famous cartoon I did at, 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 in, in the Dayton Daily News. I did, the, I did the shuttle on top of the plane, on top of the right flyer, on top of the right flyer. People frigging loved it. It was truly, truly, um, it was truly a great idea. And but it happened just because of that. I was saying, no, I got to do this, Henry Kiss, and the house went black. It was just this, this thing went right over my house to go to Air Wright Patterson Air Force Base. So that was uh, that was the thing. That was the thing. That's yeah, true. That's true. Mike, got a okay. question. Yes. Hi. Yes. So so I'm Cal, I'm the cartoonist for the Baltimore Sun and the Economist magazine. Yes, great. So great cartoonist. So we have a, a question that many cartoonists are asked. Yes. But it's a question that I I really love to hear the answer from other cartoonists, and that are that is who are your favorite presidents to draw? And I was wondering maybe there's a pad there. Maybe you could help us out and, and show us some oh, of your favorite favorite presidents. Favorite to presidents to draw. Are you kidding? You know. Well, you know. I'm an old fart, so I, I love all of them. Uh, you know, I, I can go back to Wilkie. Wilkie was fabulous. I don't know, I don't know if you were around at the time, but God, he had this fabulous. Yes, no, he, no, and, uh, but he wasn't all that fun as a person. But you know, no, um, no, you know, I always do whenever I do um, 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 uh, some of my favorite presidents. Um, um, uh, I was what? What are we doing? Oh, nice. Oh, we can't do this. Oh, well. Okay, now hang on. We have a little problem. A little problem. It's probably w worth more interesting than that. Okay, Just that's great. It's a, it's a space shuttle. A space shuttle. <laughs> a space shuttle. Well, uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite guys, I, I, I was during Nixon, and, and Nixon was fabulous because, you know, um, because uh, I wish I had a heavier pen. Anybody have a, anybody have a, Sharpie, a Sharpie or something? Oh, you do? Yeah. Get out of here. Nick out of here. Uh, no, I think. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, Benson, Steve Benson just gave me this pen. How cool is that? I love that. Okay, so uh, so you know the you know the eyebrows were so fun, and and then and then really I always thought it would be fun to do to do a comic strip um, using Nixon. Nixon would have been a fabulous comic strip because he was funny. He was funny no matter. What he did, I mean, he would—he uh, was so insincere. Uh, you know, you could be with the Pope, and he'd say, "Hello, Pope." You know, just a funny, <laughs> no, just a funny person, and, and you could put it in anything. And truly, it was—it was, it was one of those great things, you know. Um, and, you know, and then, and then I'd I'd do the nose and stuff. Um, um, uh, often, often when uh, when oh oh, I'll show you this one thing. Uh, often, often what I would do, I, I did this cartoon for. Um, 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 Doonesbury, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Gary, uh, I did this one thing of, of, of Nixon, and, uh, 
and I, I did his eyes like this, and then you know, like like this, and uh, and then his forehead like that, you know, and then he's there, and uh, and then and then he's got a, a trench coat on, okay, and he's holding it like this, you know, a trench coat like that, and um, and Gary Gary loved this, and so I so I had him had him, you know like that no you know holding open this trench coat and then right here i just did another another caricature of nixon right here you know you know you know with the with the thing you know and the little eyes like that you know and then and then and then and then he loved that you know you know so so and so for sure and so for sure that was my that, that was my that was my i've never done that in front of, in front of a crowd can I tell one last story? Uh, one last story, and then I'm done. And then I'm done. Unless somebody. That was a tricky dick. Oh, what's that? That was a tricky dick. A tricky. Oh, aren't you amazing? Oh, a tricky. That was a tricky dick. I love playing. Playing. Uh, when when I started the comic strip, I had to move home be, uh, because, um, uh, you know, doing a comic strip and doing the political cartoons. Some of you do both things. And when people come and ask you, oh, my, love, my mother loves your comic strip, can you please do a thing? And you go, yes, you know, and you do a thing, you know. But if you don't have any time and you say no, oh, you can't do that. So I just moved away. I moved down to my house. And, but when you're at your house, it's very uh, boring. I mean, you know, you, so you have to do your own, your own uh, things to make you interested. So one time, um, um, uh, my, my boss, uh, not Jim, but... Uh, but uh, our other friend, uh, Hap Kaywood, had bought a, a juicer, had bought a juicer called the Champion Juicer. And he said, buy one of these, it'll make you healthy, you'll live forever, you know, it'd be great. And so I bought this thing. This thing was, this thing was like this big. You had a, almost brrr, like this, you know, it was huge. And, and here was, a, here was a, a thing that you put all the fruits and vegetables or anything in there. And then down below, it, uh, it has the juice. And then out here, it spits the pulp. And now they, they like the pulp, but at the time, the pulp was out here. And uh, so one day, it was a Saturday, my daughter, um, Molly, uh, Molly was having all of her friends upstairs in the, in the, in the uh, dining room, I mean, in the uh, upstairs uh, playing. And, uh, and, uh, and so and I was putting all these things in here. And I was even putting apricot, dried apricots, and juice coming out, and the thing would come out. And when it came out with all these things, came out a brown, a brown little, very looked or very organic, and it plopped down with a little Dairy Queen kind of point on it. And and I said to my, I said to Mary, and I said, look at that, that looks kind of gross, isn't that? Yeah, that looks gross, you know. And then I remembered that she was having this party upstairs. She was a little bitty kid, and and she had just gotten a cat, Fluffy, bringing Fluffy. I hated Fluffy, but you know, it, it, was, it was Fluffy. And so, and so I went and I got the Dairy Queen thing up to a point like this, and I got over to the steps leading up into the bed, uh, second floor, and then I, I, I put it right there, you know, on the steps, you know, big thing, Dairy Queen thing, fairly large, and, um, and I went around to the railing and I said, Molly, Molly, God damn it, get here, you know, get over here. And so Molly and all of her six other friends came to the railing or looking downstairs where I am. I said, do you remember when I told you that if you get a cat, you had to clean it up? And she said, yeah. I said, look at that. And all the kids went, oh, gross, you know. I said, I said you got to clean that up. She said, no, uh, Fluffy usually does little. No, I said, I said, I know that that's Fluffy stuff. And, you know, and I went over and I grabbed a hand and I smelled it. And all the kids went, no, no, that's disgusting. And I said, I said, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll double check it. Right, well, there you are. Oh, yeah, that's Fluffy stuff. And one of the girls got so upset, she did this projectile vomit across this most expensive sofa we ever had, a blue, so blue sofa. And she must have been eating, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, Fruit Loops because it had orange and green and red and stuff, and it never came out. So I don't do that anymore. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>